Balance of Payment includes several accounts. One of them is current account. Another one is capital and financial account. Some textbooks, they prefer to include both capital and financial account together for simplicity. Other textbooks, they prefer to separate capital and financial account. In this example, I will combine both capital and financial accounts together. Therefore, every time here I use the word capital account, I'm referring to both capital and financial, but I'm not going to write the word financial. So here, capital account refers to both capital and financial accounts. So some students just memorize the items under each account. As I promised you, I don't want you to memorize anything. Therefore, I will give you a simple, easy criteria that if you follow, you'll be easily able to differentiate between the items under current account and the items under capital account. If I give you any item, apply this criteria, you could easily classify it. So give me your full attention for just five seconds. So what do you mean by current account? Current account, it means that one way transaction. Capital account, two ways transaction. So what's the difference between one way and two way transactions? Let me give you an example. Exports. Let's assume that we export markers to Hong Kong. Does it mean that in the future we need to import markers from Hong Kong with the same quantity, with the same quality? Of course not. Therefore, exports is considered one way or two ways. It's considered one way. If it's considered one way, I will put it under current account. Another example. Let's assume that we import iPhones from US. Does it mean that in the future we need to export the same number with the same version with the same quality of iPhones to United States? Definitely not. Therefore, it's one way. If it's one way, I will record it under current account. Another example. Let's assume that you are rich, you have a lot of money, you have a lot of deposits and you'd like to put a deposit in a Swiss bank in Switzerland. So if you put a deposit in an international bank, does it mean that in the future you will withdraw your money back and you will take your money back? Yes. If you will take your money back, this means that it's considered two-way transaction. Because if you put 10 million euro and you will withdraw 10 million euro, so this means that it's two-way transaction. If it's two-way transactions, it will appear under capital account. Another example. Let's assume that you are a multinational corporation and you'd like to take an international loan from a British bank. If you take a loan from a British bank, does it mean that you need to repay the loan back? Yes. If you repay the loan back, so this is considered a two-way transaction, therefore it will appear under capital account. Then let's play a little in order to make sure that you fully understand the concept. Every time you put a deposit, one day you'll take your money back and that's why it's two-way transaction, classify it under capital account. But every time you put a deposit, you will receive interest on this deposit. Therefore, this interest is considered one way or two ways. Do you need to repay the interest back to the bank? No, you'll just take the interest to yourself as a return on your deposit. Consequently, the interest is considered one way. Therefore, the interest on the loan will appear under current account because it's one way, but the deposit itself will appear under capital account because it's two ways. The same with the loan. Every time you take a loan, you will repay the loan back. So if the loan is two ways transaction, it will appear under capital account. But every time you take a loan, you need to pay an interest. Once you repay the interest, you're not going to get it back. Therefore, the interest is one way transaction. It will appear only under current account. Let me give you another example. You are a multinational corporation and you would like to invest in other countries. For example, Australian multinational corporation would like to invest in Italy. This is called foreign direct investment, FDI. Therefore, foreign direct investment is considered one-way transaction or two-way transaction. Once you invest in Italy, after a couple of years, you will sell the project and get your money back. Why? Because you would like to generate higher return. So you would like to sell the project and invest in another project that will generate a higher return. Therefore, foreign direct investment is considered one way or two ways. It's two ways. Why? Because one day you will sell your project and get your money back. Therefore, I will classify it under capital account. Another example is portfolio investment. What do you mean by portfolio investment? It means that either you buy shares or stocks. 
and here I refer to international shares or international stocks or bonds, international bonds. And these bonds could be corporate bonds, bonds issued by the company, or government bonds, bonds issued by the government, which we call it treasury bonds. So every time you buy a share or you buy a bond, one day you will sell the share or a bond and get your money back. Therefore, it's one way or two way transactions. It's two way transactions. If it's two way transactions, I would classify it under capital account. Let's play again. Every time you make a project, why does any company or any investor would like to make a project? To generate profit. So the profit you will get from this project, is it considered one way or two ways? Once you get the profit, will you repay it back? No, therefore it's one way. If it's, un if it's one way, I will record it under current account. Every time you buy a share and the company makes profit, what are you gonna do with this extra profit? They will distribute cash dividends to shareholders, to owners. Therefore, this dividend is considered one way or two ways. Dividends is considered one way because you're not going to repay it back to the company. Therefore, dividends, I will classify it under current account. Every time you buy a bond, you will receive an interest on a bond, which we call it coupon payment. So this coupon payment is considered one way or two ways. It's one way because you're not going to repay it back. Therefore, since it's one way, I will classify it under current account. Also, some of us, they work overseas. Some of us work as consultant. So let's assume that if you are an economic consultant or a financial consultant to an international company and they pay you your income for consultation, therefore this salary, this wage, this income is one way or two ways. It's one way because you're not going to repay it back. Therefore, I will report it under current account. Let me give you another example. Let's assume that someone comes from a developing country and this developing country has a low average GDP, low average income. Therefore, this person studies here in Australia, he got high quality education and then he got highly paid job. Therefore, he would like to assist his family back in this developing country just to repay them back. Therefore, he decided to take part of his salary and send it back. For example, some Mexicans who work in the United States. They would like to help and assist their families back, so they send part of their income to their families back. Is this considered one way or two ways? This is considered one way. Why? Because their families are not going to repay them back. They are already old, they are pensioners, they don't work, they cannot repay it back. Therefore, it will be one way. If it's one way, it will be recorded under current account. And that's what we call as a work remittance. And if you check the statistics for the majority of developing countries, you will discover that work remittance is a very large number because they get a lot of money from their family members who work overseas. Another example. Do you remember we mentioned that loans is considered one way or two way transaction? It's two way transactions. Therefore, I will report it under capital account. Let's assume that we would like to give some financial grants or some grants or aids to another country that had a natural disaster. Is this considered one way or two ways? If you'll give a grant, a grant they don't need to repay it back. If they don't need to repay it back, it means that it's a one way transaction. Therefore, it will be reported under current account. Therefore, I will write here grants. Therefore, you could easily classify any item either current account or capital account based on our simple criteria, which is, is this one-way transaction? Report it under current account. Two-way transaction? Report it under capital account. So when we look here at current account, we have many items. So can we classify them again? Like here we have exports, imports, interest, profit, dividends, coupon, income, work remittance, and the grants. Can we classify them? Yes. So I can get the first component, which is exports and imports, and we call it balance of trade or trade balance. And do you remember that if I get exports minus imports is called net exports? So we call it trade balance, which is the same as net exports. When I look at interest, profit, dividends, coupon and income, I can classify them together and I call it net income. Because this is the income we receive on the asset we own, either this asset is physical or financial and also the payment we receive for consultation or for work 
as an income or a salary or a wage. And then the last category, work remittance and the grants, is considered net transfer. Therefore, if you look at the balance of payment, you'll discover that current account, usually the biggest items are trade balance, exports and imports. For capital account, it's mainly investment, foreign direct investment and portfolio investment.